Snick and Mike's top 100 games But does anyone care what they have to say? Lit. I know I don't Cause they may doubt, they may scream They may say some things that are plain wrong Dab on it, dab on it But they are dumb dumb bing bongs Matthew Juice better <laughs> What's up, everybody? My name is Nick Murphy. I'm Mike Murphy. We are the Brothers Murph, and this is the continuation of our Top 100 list. This is going to be 80 to 71. Boom, boom. Top 100 games of all time. Yeah. According to us. According to us. Not according to According to these two. I'm sure in the comments there have been many things like, you guys are idiots. Here's the thing. (laughs) You're right. You're not wrong You're about not wrong. that. You're not wrong. But I do like these games. But you know what the cool thing is? Is like whether or not we're right or wrong about our games, the point is is that the decisions are pure. Yeah, they're they're all hundred percent ours. They're hundred percent ours. They're not influenced in any way at all. Not at all. We're not bought in any one way. And no. I just want to reiterate that because yeah. it's very important. I feel like there's some people it's like, you know they're getting paid to talk about these games. You know they're getting paid. No, we're sure not. We're sure not getting paid. We don't get paid to talk about anything. About anything at all. We're hundred percent independent, free. Yeah. So speaking of that, let's go ahead and start the list. No long intro. Let's get into it. Let's go into our number 80. Bam. That's icy in harmonica. So our number 80 is brought to you by 100% pure maple syrup right from Canada. It's from Canada. It comes in a can up there. What? How do you even get to it? I can't, I can't drink this. But you can hear how delicious it is. Listen, listen how delicious it is. It's so thick and goopy. I want it though. I can't. I just want to drink this. I, I know. I don't know how to Apparently get it. it's good, though. This is an odd choice, cans, Canada. Odd choice. Speaking of more odd choices, my number 80. Is it odd? No, I think okay. it's quite good. Okay. That's why <laughs> it's on my like, top. I was like, it's a good segue. <laughs> it's not. You know what, Nick? What? You know what it is? What? It's a Dice Tower Central, baby. What is it? By Arcane Wonders. That's right. All right. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> leaving that in. <laughs> I did <laughs> Just in case, I try not to say game companies because sometimes they change. No, no, you're right. I was like, I was like it's Arcade Wonders. I was like, I'm like, oh god, I hope I'm not making a terrible mistake. It's viral, folks. Oh, I love viral. Yeah, uh, viral is my number eighty. It's an awesome, fun spin on an area control game. Yeah, but the areas are areas of the body. That's true. You know what I mean? Like you can infect the brain, you can infect <laughs> the heart, the lungs, all the stuff that's in the middle. The uh, it's a bit squishy for yeah. me, but you know, it's like. It's, <laughs> God, but it's so really cool because you have all these these viruses and you can move them around. You can kill other viruses. You can multiply. Uh, but the more you do, the kind of more attention you draw to yourself. Yeah. So then like doctors start researching who you are and why you're in the body, man. Like, and then if you if you make too big of a ruckus, they wipe you out. Yeah. They find an antidote basically and you get wiped out and they have to come fighting back in. Yeah. It's just such a fun, interesting twist on an area yes. control game. It's by far, I think, the most appealing area control game to me in terms of theme. Yes. Because like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to just, area control isn't one of those where it's like, what kind of game is area control? Oh, I'm going to want to play it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, it doesn't hit sell miss. me yeah. a little more. I'm not against them, but you yeah, like, yeah. got to, viral, I was just like, that's the theme right there. I'm like, I want to play that for sure. Yeah, it's got super cutesy art and it's just great. And the game is pretty mean, like a lot of area control games, because you're like killing other viruses. Yeah. But I think because of the theme and because of the art, and because of ultimately how kind of like silly the game is, despite the fact that it's like a you know medium weight normal game, mm-hmm. it never feels mean. Yeah, and I love that about it. Yeah, and and like the whole thing is like you you're gonna get wiped out of the body at some point, and yeah. it's not at all like you're out of the game. No, it's just something that's gonna happen. And the whole game is built, I feel like, to make sure that it's gonna be a tight game. Yeah, there's all sorts of catch up mechanisms and things in places so that you are in it till the very end. It's going to be a tight race for sure every time, and it's just like. I just love it. I yeah, love it. Every time we played it, grand. it's been fantastic. Yeah, it's grand. Yeah, Great so choice. That's my number 80 viral. My number 80 is a game that has been mentioned before. We got a little crossover here. And this is a game that is very large for how small it claims to be. And that is Tiny Epic Quest. Okay. Tiny Epic Quest, you know, we, we've played And the first time we played it, I was kind of like, all right. You know, just kind of like, all right. And then we played it again a couple times. And I, I actually like it a lot more than I thought I did originally. It's by mm-hmm. far my favorite of the Tiny Epic games. We haven't played very many of them, but I, I like it more uh, than the other ones. And I don't know, it's it's cool, but it's a game where you have all these big kind of tarot-sized cards and it makes, like, honestly, like, a pretty darn big board. It's a very large game for being in such a small box. It packs down small. 
and you have your little meeples, and you're essentially going around the kingdom trying to, like, get spells and trying to um, push your luck, as you mentioned, which I think is a really cool part of the game. You're, like, pushing your luck mm -hmm. and stuff, and you're getting different items, and you're trying to, like, do little quests and stuff, and it's just, it's a fun little game. I really like it a lot. Uh, again, it packs down to the normal tiny epic size, mm -hmm. which is a little box like that. Um, I wish it was a, I honestly, I wish the cards were like normal player size cards so it could be smaller. Like the realm that you Yes, build. yes. Sure. I wish they, because they don't necessarily really need to be that big. They could be smaller. I think it would cramp up the board a little bit, but then it would like actually be kind of true to its name. Because the game is like great, but like you need a, it's not like a game where you're like, oh, this little space of table, we can play yeah, on it. Right. It's like, no, you need like a big area for it so it's just very travel sized ultimately it's a little minor complaint you know but but i i, I really like the game a lot it looks great uh it's it's done very efficiently i like little item meeples they get like little swords and stuff it's great little gimmick um tiny epic quest i like it a lot it's a good number 80 let's go on number 79 let's do it 79 like you know like an industry that i feel like no one like appreciates anymore but it's really thriving with great quality and prices hmm. dude it's grandfather clocks no one talks about grandfather clocks anymore, you know? And it's like, the Clock Depot is really, like, a great place to get your grandfather clocks when you inevitably want to pass them down. Um, so, wait, you're talking about giant clocks? Yeah, like the big pendulum Like the thing clock. that signals, hey, yeah, this house yeah, is haunted, yeah. for sure? Yes, exactly. You mean the thing that you could just put on your wrist instead of, like, carrying I mean, you around put on a truck? A watch on your wrist and pay, like, $4 at a gas station. But these cost thousands of dollars. Okay. And you can pass them down to your grandkids who don't want them. Makes sense. Clock Depot, you said? Clock Depot. Let's go there now. <laughs> <laughs> My number 79 is going to be a game that I, I wish, I think it'd be a lot higher if it played better at two, and that is the Manhattan Project Energy Empire. Right. I like this game a lot. I really like the theme. I love the worker placement aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, and we've played it at two a couple times, and it just feels a little too easy. But nonetheless, I really like the game. I just like it at higher player counts, you know? And it's one mm -hmm. of those things where it's like, ah. And I think it'd be higher if it, if it scaled a little bit better. But nonetheless, Manhattan Project is a game... Um, well, Manhattan Project Energy Empire specifically. We actually There's haven't played... Yeah. yeah, we actually haven't played uh, the Manhattan Project, the normal one. But it is a worker placement game where you are essentially making some kind of energy empire. You're getting all these different kinds of buildings and you're doing all this stuff and you have to pay with like oil and, and yeah. steel and all this kind of stuff and all these like cool, really beautiful components. And one thing I really love about the game is like the very beginning, you get a nation. Yeah. You get a nation. You can be like India or you can be like Iraq or, or Iran America or, or America. And each nation comes with a different starting resources and kind of like a starting ability like your direction maybe yeah if you have like Iran or Iraq you have you start with a lot of oil because they have a lot of oil there but if you start if you're in America or India you start with different stuff and I think that's cool because it kind of drives you to go in a certain way at the mm -hmm. beginning of the game and I think it's really really cool and then there's like pollution and you're making pollution as you go if you you can get coal like, you can have coal dice, and you're rolling out dice to get your energy, Very but dirty, it, cause, it causes a lot of pollution. You can pollute the water and pollute the air and all this stuff. And then you have to deal with it because pollution isn't good. So then you have to try and, like, depollute your pollutants off the board. And I think that's a really, really cool uh, way to go about it, being like, hey, this is all industry, but you don't want to pollute if you can. And I think it's really, really cool. And at two Gosh. players, it's fine. It just feels a little too open. And it doesn't feel to the like... the point where, like, I was worried we were playing it wrong. Yeah. I was like, are we... Is it, are, should we... Are we messing something up? Because it didn't feel, just didn't feel very tight. And I like worker placement games that are, like, kind of like, oh... I need him to not take that spot. And by the end of it, we had, like, no pollution or anything. It was yeah. it was a little too Maybe easy. Maybe we got lucky. I don't know, it's but possible, it, felt, yeah. it felt too easy. But honestly, I really like the game. It's beautiful. I love the components. Um, and it's just it's 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 just wonderful. I really like Manhattan Project Energy Empire. And that is my 79. So my number 79 is epic. It is so epic. I've never completed it. I've never played through a full game. <laughs> I've never completed this game. Maybe some of the comments is like erroneous. I'm just like, nope, can't <laughs> Doesn't this. even count. <laughs> I know what it is. Go on. Um, and this is one that, man, I want to play it so bad right now. It's gonna happen. It soon. is going to be War of the Ring. That's true. Second edition. Yeah, no one plays first edition. <laughs> yeah. But uh it is amazing. It is yeah. it is Lord of the Rings in a box. It is. Uh and you it's it's a it's just a, a two-player clash. You're either the good, ultimate good, ultimate evil, 
just slamming together yeah. for for the fate of Middle Earth. Yeah, man. yeah. And it's incredible. And I'm listening to Lord of the Rings right now, this great audio rendition, and I'm just all in the world. And like, I got to complete it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do it. We're going to do it very soon. And, but the thing is, is it, it's like we've had this game for a long time, mm-hmm. a very long time. When we, you know, we, we probably bought it too early in our board game. Bought it because we Lord of the Rings, and that was the only reason. And yeah. like, zero regrets. Yeah, oh, Fully yeah. painted, zero regrets. Yeah. But, like, it was, at the time, like, probably heavier than we were really ready for. So, like, every time we'd try to play A, we'd have to kind of relearn it. Yeah. Uh, and then it just, we didn't ever set enough time aside yeah. to play it because it is a bigger, heavier, yeah. longer game. And I really want to play it now because now I feel like we're going to be able to grasp what's going on quicker yeah. and easier and really get into it. Yeah. Uh, but, like, even those few experiences we've had and given the theme and everything, like, it's it's on the list. You know, and I feel like if we do start playing it regular regularly, it's gonna it's gonna rise up higher. It's seventy nine simply because like it's just doesn't get played very often, and, and hasn't honestly played, won't ever get played that often. No, it's but just like, too big of a game. Like, yeah. like you you go through Lord of the Rings every year, so we'll play War of the Ring every year. Yeah, you know for sure. I mean? we'll, At least we'll coincide once, yeah. with us listening. We'll we'll go through and and, and yeah, all that. Yeah, it's totally. just uh, it's just so cool. Just like. Sauron and and all the forces of evil just have basically unlimited resources. Yeah. They can just produce. Well, it's more. super asymmetric. That's the thing. Yeah. It's like yeah. And then if you're on the good side, it's like you have all your troops and stuff, but they're limited. Like once yeah. they're gone, they gone. They gone. And there's like well, you, know, you can make more orcs, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> you can pop them out of the ground real quick. <laughs> and so it's just like it. But it and the thing I like about that is that it feels very true to Lord of the Rings, where yeah. it just. If you're on the side of the fellowship and everything, you just feel like there's no chance. Yeah. You have no chance yeah, it's to make hopeless. it. It's pretty hopeless. Yeah, and you can kind of like get in these different areas and you do you like do a siege and try to turtle and just stay alive as long as you can, like in Helm's Deep, like <laughs> I got this, you know, like <laughs> gotta wait for sunrise on the fourth day. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but <laughs> pretty much. It, it, and it's just like it's just it's awesome. Yeah. I mean it's it's show how good it is you've never played a full game of it and it's still in your top hundred. hundred yeah. percent. You yeah. know, because those times you've played, that I'm good. like it it immerses me in the feeling of this amazing tale that's been such a crucial part of our life. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, we're not the only ones who think highly of War of the Ring. Yeah. But yeah, it's my 79, and I haven't even played a full game of it. But- Boom. Nice. Let's go on to 78. Pow. 78. Brother, so my number 78 is uh, an asymmetric game. Ooh, nice. It's an asymmetric area control game. Uh, and it's really, really fun, especially at like three or four players. And it's going to be Cry Heaven. Wow, this is higher on your list than mine. Yeah. I figured it was going to be, I thought it wasn't going to be on your list at all. I, hey, man. Hey, the list it makes itself, brother. The list wants what the list wants. The list wants what it wants, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, it, I, I think probably got bolstered because we typically would play it at two player as we do most of our games, you know, and, and Cry Havoc is fun at two player. Yeah, it's great. We play it at three player and it's more fun. And there's this AI character, the Trogs, the kind of natives of the planet that you're trying to exploit in various ways. Yeah. Um, and at four players, those players are actually played by someone. Mm-hmm. And so that just kind of took a next level. Like yeah. We played it at a convention at four players and it was just really awesome. Yeah, it's great. It was just a really fun experience. Um having all the factions represented, all kind of going at it. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a really cool, interesting game. Yeah, it's great. That I really appreciate. And every time you play it, and it's rare that it gets played, but every time we do, it's a cool experience. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's all I gotta say. It's like a fun area control game. That's great. Depending on your faction, you're either trying to kill everything, spread out, trying to mine the, the, the resources on the planet or you're just trying to get everyone the heck out of there if you're the natives and you're the trogs yeah. you're trying to be like can you please can you not can this you is not? this is my home can you not can i live here please can you not? is that okay with you all right yeah so anyway <laughs> Uh, that is my number 78, uh, Kravik. Cool. My number 78 is a game that's all mysterious with ghosts and essentially like kind of like ultimate clue and that is Mysterium. Righteous. Is my 78. Mysterium was a great game. 
Um, it's a great game where uh, it's a cooperative game, mm -hmm. but it's it's a weird game because like one person essentially plays like half the game, and yeah. then everyone else plays like the other half. Which is why I really like Mysterium with like four or five. It can go up to seven, and I'm like, no, nah. it's because then everyone else is just kind of sitting around doing nothing. Yeah. But essentially. One person is a ghost, and the ghost cannot talk. They're not allowed to talk at all. And the ghost has been murdered by someone. And each person around the table, table is an investigator. And there's a whole bunch of uh, people, places, and things. And it's essentially potential people that could have killed the ghost, potential places, and potential, potential things. And the ghost is behind a big screen. And on the screen, each investigator is assigned a person, a place, and a thing. And then you have these big... Big old, uh, like, terror-sized cards that are kind of like Dixit artwork, like really mm -hmm. trippy, really beautiful place, artwork. Yeah. Just super weird. It's like cupcakes flying and all this kind of very trippy stuff. And they're, they're dream, dream cards. cards. Yeah. Exactly. They're dream cards. So they're meant to be kind of weird and trippy. And you essentially are, are so, like, say, like, Mike is an investigator and it's like this one woman is the person that's attached to him. And she's kind of this old woman, like, Mah! like that. And so I then have to send him dream cards because I'm not allowed to talk. Send him dream cards to try and point him out at that woman try to be like this is your person so the woman might be wearing like a red dress so i give him a dream card that has like a lot of red and essentially but again it's all his interpretation and really the group's interpretation of what i'm sending out yeah and so you're constantly and so once he gets the right person he gets the right person then i'll move on to trying to get him to guess his location and you're doing all this simultaneously so i'm handing these people cards and these people cards and they're all discussing and stuff and it's really really fun the mm -hmm. issue with it at higher player counts is like it just becomes like there's one ghost and six investigators, so you're having to hand out cards to all of them. It just goes on too long. I almost like want to like do two ghosts in that situation, and it's you just possible. kind of split. You do this half, you do this half, and we can kind of like you can do that. Mm -hmm. you can, why not? Yeah, right. Why not? Just you know? because like it ghost can talk. be, yeah. yeah, it can be a lot of work. But it's <laughs> super great, especially at like four or five, because then it's like one and three or one and four, and then it's like it's great. You know, it's it's fun. really really wonderful. I love it a lot. It's an interesting take on that game, kind of like Grown Up Clue in a weird way. Yeah, uh, but I love Mysterium. It's it's really really fun and and some we kind of started playing on st on our Twitch stream too and that went really well too which was yeah. great you know so the so. chat gets to guess and we're just ghosts handing out yeah, cards just handing out cards it was, it was super awesome and they're so. super good at it they're way better than and they they're are. way better than we are about it but wow. either way nonetheless Mysterium is my seventy eight I think and yeah. um great game wonderful game boom let's do seventy seven do it whoop. <laughs> Alrighty, my number 77 is a game that I think is going to keep climbing because I like it a lot. It is a two-player only game, mm. and it's a game that rhymes with West Central Produce. Oh, yeah? And that is Pagoda. Pagoda. West Central Produce. Get it? Doesn't matter. Point is, you can get fresh avocado in California any time of year with West Central Produce. Got it. So Pagoda, what's that about, Nick? Pagoda is a two-player game where you are building pagodas. Pagodas are those really tall buildings that show up in like like Japan and like Vietnam, Vietnam, a lot of like Southeast Asia. But they're very, very beautiful. They're very tall buildings, like they kind of like the thatched roofs yeah, and stuff. Multi-tiered, wonderful, wonderful, uh, cool buildings. And they made a game about a two-player only game called Pagoda. And what it is is you're building pagodas, but it's this really cool like three D board. Yeah. Because what it is is you have these little like uh, hexagonal like cylinders mm -hmm. that are in different colors. And you're building them, and they're the columns that go between the fours of pagodas. And so you're building out the columns, and then you put a pagoda on top, and you build the columns, put a pagoda on top. So you end up having these, like, kind of tall, but, like, this big little pagodas, and you're essentially trying to score points. And how you score points in the game is by building columns on different levels. If you build on the ground level, yeah. each column you build is one point. Right. If you build on the second level, each column you build is two points, and they can go up to uh, four levels. So if you build three columns on the fourth level, that's 12 points. It's a lot of points. Mm -hmm. But then once you build the, the roof, which is the fifth level, that's the end of that pagoda. And once you build three pagodas, the game ends. But it's really cool of like, it's a lot of st strategy and stuff because you you don't want to set up your other person. Like what I don't yeah. want to do is like for my last move, build a roof because then Mike on his turn can go boom, 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 build three columns. And especially if it's like the fourth level, I just gave him 12 points. Yeah. It's dependent on cards and these different colored cards. Yeah. So I would need to have the right colors to do that. And there's a little bit of public information. So we'll each know two of the cards that we yeah. have, but then there's cards in the hand. So that's the whole key is like set yourself up without just setting this person up for yeah. a bunch of points on their turn. And it's, it's cool. And like whenever you build all the, they're all different colors. So whenever you build a roof of a certain color, like a red roof or a gold roof or a purple roof, you get some kind of special ability. And yeah. they're pretty simple, 
but like using those special abilities or building different colors of roofs because you're like, well, I already have the purple special ability. Mm -hmm. So there's no point in me building a purple roof because I can't get the special ability yeah. again. So you're like, oh, no, I'm going to build a gold roof because I don't have that one yet or I just used it. So and it's just it's really, really fun. And like. It's just, it's become one of my go-to two-player games. I just talked to our friend Crook the other day, and he really liked it. And then they played it at Game Group the other night, and, like, I was looking at it, and I'm like, God, I love that game. And just, yeah. like, Pagoda is a great game. If you like two-player games, pick it up. It's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Pagoda is my 77. Boom. My number 77 is a game that lights up the night sky, uh, but just don't talk about it. Keep quiet. Oh. Really? It yeah. is Hanabi. That's yeah, not on my list. <laughs> Dude, why do you hate this game, bro? What is wrong with you? It's, I don't know. I don't know why I don't like it's it. It's fantastic. Don't, don't. <laughs> fantastic. So it is a card game or a domino game if you want to pay way too much money for dominoes. <laughs> that's true. Uh, where you know everything that's in the game except for what you have in your hand. Yes. Uh, and so it's this cool thing where you're holding cards and you're holding them facing the yeah. center. So you can't see it. Everyone else can. And you're trying to communicate with each other to let everyone know what cards you have so that you can then play cards in order. There's five different colors and you have to play them hopefully in order numbers one, two, three, four, and then five yeah. without skipping stuff because if you if you basically skip, you burn, you know, fuses and everything and you're trying to put on like a really grand firework yeah. display. Uh, and it's just basically however many points you get by the end is is how good you did. Yeah. So you hopefully want to get fives across the board, course, have 25 yeah, yeah. and a perfect score and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it's just a really fun game because the way you communicate and you can only communicate so many times is really specific. You can say to one of your, your fellow players, you can say, Hey, this card, this card, this card are white or this card and that card are threes. You can only give values of either a number or a color. And yeah. you cannot say, Hey, these two are white. If there's a white one over here, you have to put yeah. all of the information out there. So it gets interesting because you don't want to lead someone down the wrong path where they're like, that means this is the white two. Boom. You know, like, no, it's it's white, but it's a one. We already played that. You could have discarded that, which given us more time. Yeah. It's just this really interesting game. And I think part of the reason I love it so much is because I played it with a buddy of, of yeah. mine a lot. And we got this whole, like, second language where, like, we – it was never about what we were saying – it was about what we weren't. So if I said, if, if I was like, you have three white cards, he's just like, I know this is a green four. Thanks, buddy. We, <laughs> yeah. were, we were on yeah, another, another seriously. level, and it was awesome for yeah. us two to play. And I just think it's a great game. I think it's a great I think it's um, super clever, yeah. clever game. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's, I don't hate the game. I just don't like it. That I've never been that, that huge a fan of it. And I've played, I think, twice with you and Zach, who they have the second language, and I'll just be like... I was playing wrong, and yeah. and they were very upset. And I was just Why like, this is not right. <laughs> I just didn't know the language, you know? <laughs> it's ultimately fine. It's just never been my favorite game. And you've always liked it a lot more than I have. Always, though. I mean, that's never been not the case, so. You can't come to West Central Produce now. That's true. It's your that makes sense. It's too bad. I can't get fresh avocados. Boom. Or asparagus. Where I live in Carol North Carolina. <laughs> right. I just know you can't get avocados there all year. Yeah. You can't here. It's great. Boom. Cali for life. 77. Move 76. Do it. Bang, bang. 76. God, I'm hungry, man. Could we really go just... for a New York slice? Oh, okay. Hey. All I right. split, you choose, we eat. Good, got it. We boom. eat, all right? Bang, boom, bang, bow. What do you want? Speed Sorry, side. people from New York. <laughs> this is a, uh, a, there's a spot on Brooklyn. Hey, you're, not wrong. you're not wrong. Um, New York Slice is my 76. It is an awesome, simple, light, I split, you choose game. That was this game that we saw at conventions forever. Yeah. It's just like people were playing this thing. I'm like, what the heck is that? It's just like these people got pizza. There's just pizzas everywhere. Everyone's Most make pizza. games more hungry than any other game. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because it's like weird photorealistic pizza. Kinda, yeah. And it's, like, it's like, it's bizarre, but it's a really fun game yeah. where you're going to play just a few quick rounds where you make a pizza. And then you have to split it up into portions that uh, equal the amount of players, basically. Yeah. And and however you split it is up to you. Yeah. You know, you can split it where you're like, this is just one slice, and this is five, and this is four. You know what I mean? Each pizza has 11 slices, and it's just this weird puzzle of trying to split it in ways that are going to be advantageous, hopefully, for yeah. you. But if you're the splitter, you also pick last. So you're going to get whatever's left over. Yeah. So you got to hope that, like... 
you do it and, and you make things appealing for other people. And then ultimately what you're trying to do is have the most of each um, type of pizza. Yeah. Because there's numbers, you know, 2 through 11. Yeah. I think, or three through 11. Yeah, and it's like, if you have the most threes, you get three points. If you have the most fives, you get five points at the end. So there's this kind of like, yeah, yeah, you know, control over over the types of pizza. And it's just an interesting, fun game that plays up to six. It's yeah. a great filler uh, it's, for it's game it's night. It's a big filler, but it's a great, because it's 30 minutes or less. That's with it, teaching. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a great filler. Yeah. yeah. And there's these little specials that you can tag on to either slices of pizza or have as a, as its own individual thing as one of the, you know, splits that you make that just give, like, a little, sometimes it's end game scoring, sometimes it gives you an ability in the game. They're just, like, little yeah. things. And it's just a it's just an awesome, light game yeah. that comes to every game that we do because it'll never get busted out when there's just that weird, there's four people who aren't, they finish their game but no one else has finished yeah, their yeah. game. And, totally. And you play it. So New York Slice is... My number 76. All righty. My number uh, 76. Let me double check it real quick. Okay, so why not? My number uh, 76 is uh, uh, something that is uh, forbidden. It is forbidden dessert. Forbidden desert, actually. I wish it was forbidden dessert because I like dessert. Get some flan. But forbidden... Flan. Um... Forbidden Desert is a great game. It is the second and now a trilogy of games, of Forbidden yeah. Games. There's Forbidden Island, Forbidden Desert, and now Forbidden Skies? Yeah. Forbidden Skies, which we just played, which is also fun. Yeah. Um, and Forbidden Desert is a game by Matt Leacock, who did Pandemic, and it's, it's pretty pandemic-y, yeah. but I think it's different enough. Um, but it's a game where you essentially have crash-landed this like weird kind of steampunky ship thing. I don't know. A flying it's ship. crazy, so yeah. obviously there's no idea how to fly it. Why not? And you essentially have to go around and find the missing pieces of this ship. So you have to spread find, all over a desert. You have to find, like, the propeller. And you have to, fi- you have to find, like, the the crystal core, th- whatever. You know, steampunk stuff. And, and the, but it's set on this, like, 25... Uh, five by five grid of different like desert spots and you're going around you're flipping them over trying to find it but there's a, a sandstorm going around and the sandstorm is like an open spot in the board and it's constantly moving and mm-hmm. whatever it moves if it moves this way that means this tile that was here switches with it and then that tile gets sand on it so the sand is piling up all over kind of like the, the diseases and pandemic and you have to go around and yeah. like shovel out sand yeah but it's really really interesting the way finding the stuff works because there's going to be two thing, two tiles for each thing you have to find. So two propeller tiles and one might be here and that one will say like it's somewhere in this row. Yeah, it'll have arrows pointing up and down saying it's in this row or in this column. So the thing is like if the, the storm makes that move, it'll move. Yeah. But it's still always in this so row. So essentially these items are getting blown around by the storm. Exactly. And then somewhere else on the board, there's another propeller one that is like this. It's pointing this way. Mm-hmm. So wherever those two lines meet, like it points this way and then this way, boom. This is where that is. So the thing is, like, it can move around. Like, yeah. and it's it's wow. so clever the way they do it. I'm like, that's such a smart, simple, brilliant way to hide stuff because you never know where it's gonna be. Because even if you find one of them, it can just move around, you know, and it's mm-hmm. just it's so fun. It's great. I love it. It's a great light little game. Um, and it's cheap too. It's like twenty five bucks. It's super cheap. Yeah, and it's, it's like great. it's like always in like Barnes and Nobles and these oh, places like that. It's great. It's just very accessible, very available, and like it's a good game for the hobby because it is cooperative. Yes, you get a little bit of a power. It's easy to understand. It's fun. It's really tough. It promotes cooperation yeah, and, and discussion. It's a good game for the hobby. All yeah. those types of games, Pandemic and stuff, are great for the hobby yeah. because it'll get people excited to play more board games. Yeah, Leacock, Smash Out of the Park again. Love it. Great game. Forbidden Desert is my 76. Bang. Let's do 75. 75. What you doing? I was writing on a label. These Avery labels, they're great, man. They got True Block. Okay, and that's that means something? It basically means it blocks anything else. So if you're covering up another label, you won't show the label that's beneath it. So if you ship something or whatever you want, you reuse that box, you totally can't. Look at this. True block. Boom. Nailed it. I feel like you must have written something very complimentary. Now it says handsome. It says handsome. Okay. Avery. Cool. True block. Boom. What's your 75? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever 75 is a great two-player game. Another two-player game. And this game... It's a wonderful two-player game, kind of abstract strategy game, but it's gorgeous, and that is Santorini. Oh, okay. Santorini is a great game. I'm a big, big, big pusher of abstract games don't need to look like crap. 
They yeah. don't need to look bad. They don't need to be drab. They can it's look not a, really not a good. Prereq for a good abstract game. Yeah, and Santorini is a great example of that. It's a be- it's ultimately this abstract strategy game. You could do it with discs and whatever. No, they made it beautiful and they made it awesome. But it's a so game cool. based in like Santorini, Greece, where I've been. Must be nice. Where'd you go? Syros? I don't even... I still don't know what island I was it's on. It's a great story. It's a great story how Mike ended up on a Greek <laughs> island that he did not know he was on. Um, but nonetheless, it's a great game where you essentially have two people and you're you're moving around and you're essentially... They have these big blocks. And Santorini is the the stereotypical like whitewashed walls with like the blue caps. You see yeah, a Greek island so staring at the move. sunset with their dress blowing in the wind kind of thing. It's that. And so... You are building these towers, and you're essentially trying to get up to the third level. Right. But at the third level, then goes a dome. So if someone puts on a dome, you can't stand on top of the dome. So that blocks that level. So you're trying to just move around and maneuver and trying to get it so you can get up to a third level without someone blocking you. Right. Because someone can block you from the ground floor. Like, if you're on the second level about to go up the third and they're down here, they can just throw a dome on top, I guess. You know, it's just like, (laughs) you know, and... But it's super fun, and it's just tactical, and you're moving, and then it's really, really great as it is, but on top of that, the game comes with a bunch of different god cards, and the mm-hmm. god cards are all special abilities. So it might be like, I can build twice, or I can move twice, or I can do this, and this, and this. Sometimes they have different win conditions. Like, yeah. if you're someone, you like, if you go up two, and then you drop down to the, because you can just jump off the building. If you ever go down two levels, you win. On top of the fact that if you ever get up to a third level, you win. Yeah. And so you can win certain ways. It's just great, and it's a wonderful game. And it's, again, really cheap, but it's a beautiful abstract game on this big 3D board. And it's like, this is how abstract strategy games should be. Mm-hmm. They don't need to be just discs. You can have it be pretty and still really thinky and really tactical and so much fun. I love Santorini. A great two-player game. One of the best. Love it, love it, love it. Santorini's awesome. Boom. That's awesome. Uh, my number... Dude. My number 75. That's handsome, but in Italian. Okay, cool. Idiot. Idiot. Uh, my number 75 is one of the more excruciating games I've played. Like, it's just... It hurts. You're just like... Ugh, ugh, you gotta be doing stuff, and you just... It's hard. It's very difficult. It is Heaven and Ale. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. I really like it, man. You like it that much? I, I don't... I'm 99% sure it's not on my list at all. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a great game. It's tough, because you're moving around this wow. board, basically getting pieces to put out into your, your little lands or whatever, and it's just this interesting thing that, like, I don't even know if I fully understand yet. I've only played it a few times, but basically you can put stuff on the dark side of the board or the light side. The dark side's gonna get you, like, money and things like that. They're gonna help you. The light side's gonna help you like, raise resources and get points, and and you're trying to surround stuff on the board, and it's just this game that just, like, you 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 just like I I can't I can't get anything done I don't have any money I don't have this I like I, I'm just True. struggling you it know is a hard game yeah but like I quite enjoy it still it's not like it doesn't turn you off I'm just no like, yeah it's like oh I can't. you know I got to do fifteen things I can't do I can do zero of those things one yeah you know and it's just a really uh, tough game that like it's yeah it's this high on the list it, because it's it's kind of grasped wow. me so much and I still don't even like. I, I don't think I've mastered that game at all. No. If if any, I sure haven't. If any. That. So yeah, it's just a, it's just a really fun, interesting game. It's very pretty. The art's great, uh, and and there's like basically all these like tracks you can move up on, yeah. like different resources, and it's then you're thinky. trying to like brew. It's, it's thinky. Yeah. Like trying to explain it. Yeah. Is hard. I'm like, I, it's like, that's but that's the nature of the game. So the point is, is it's great. You should try it if you're interested. If you're interested in having a time where you're just going to be like. A lot, exactly. you know. Yeah, um, a, Heaven and Nail could be the game for you, um, and I'm just terrible at it. Yeah, but I like it. Yeah, it's a good game. Yeah, I, I, I don't like it hey. quite as much as you, but I, it's fine. Yeah, hey, I'm gonna go buy it today. It's overpriced though. Oh yeah, that game is it's, way it's overpriced. wicked overpriced. That's the only thing is like I like it. I really want to play it, but it's like eighty bucks. I'm like pass. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Catch it on sale. Heaven and Nail though, great game. Seventy five. Let's move on to seventy four, shall we? Let's do it right now. 74! You know what someone tried to get me to do the other day, Mike? What? Was buy a Jan Sport backpack. <laughs> Why would I do that? Why would you bother? Why would I do that when I already have a backpack? Yeah. And that backpack is made by the great company LL Bean. Now you might think this just looks like a, a beaten up old backpack. It is. It is. This backpack 
is like 25 years yes, old. Yes, it is. And we're not even kidding. No, nope. it is. Got my initials on it. It is. It was given to us by our, our, our grandma. Him to yeah. By his grandma. I lost mine. Yeah, you. I bet you that thing is still putting around somewhere. <laughs> I bet you. Someone with it's got MLM on the back. Yeah. I hope it's their initials because it certainly is mine. That thing cannot die. Yeah, LL it, Bean. I'm pretty sure it's Voldemort's hor- Horcrux. It's the yeah. last remaining Horcrux. Pretty much can't be destroyed. Can't do it. LL Bean. You want to buy one backpack for the rest of your life? LL Bean's the only way to go. Get an LL Bean pack. You're welcome, LL Bean. Dude. That's branding right there. Cool. So my number seventy four um, is a game that I dare say has probably been replaced, but I quite like it. Ooh. Uh, it's a game. It's a tile laying game. Uh, where you're building a castle, but this castle is crazy. Oh, really? Because it's there's the it's the castle of Mad King Ludwig. And Mad King out. Ludwig has odd tastes. He does wants very specific things. Yes, certain types of weird rooms connected to other types of weird rooms yeah. to get points. Uh, and it's just this really interesting game of like trying to put like food rooms and utility rooms and outside areas and sleeping rooms and living rooms and put them together in strategic ways to score points and get money and things like that. Uh, and it's just a really fun, cool game where you all end up with these very different looking buildings or different sizes, different shapes. Yeah. Um, and and there's these cool bonuses and everything. There's just a lot to think about. Uh, and the only problem is that there's this whole market system. It's uh, it's made by Bezier Games. Uh, it is. I always think of it as kind of like a follow-up to Suburbia. Uh, just because they're both... Is it both Ted Allspock? Yes, yes. Yeah, so they're both Ted Allspock and everything. So I always think of it, although they play differently... But in suburbia, there's a market system where the rightmost two tiles are going to be free, and you just have to pay the cost of those individual tiles, and then basically the newer tiles you can buy, but you're going to have additional costs on top of that. Uh, castles, uh, The Castles of Mad King Ludwig has a market system, but each player... Uh, every turn is like a master builder. Yeah. So they set the market. They move things around. And the idea is like, I know Nick wants this one thing. I'm going to make him pay for it. Yeah. Uh, you want to price it too high because then they won't buy it. Yeah. And if they do buy it, they're giving you the money. Yeah. So that's how you get money in the game is is you kind of have to price these things to sell. And then you pay to the bank, essentially. Uh, and it's like a really cool idea. Yes. I really like it. But ultimately, it's just, it's too much like work. I never like can think of a good way to go about it. It takes time. It just doesn't like resonate with me. Yeah. The market thing very much. I love the idea. I'm just like, I'm like, uh, so do you think it's like next year? Do you think it's probably going to pop off your list or it'll go down at least? I I think it's going to go down only because what we recently purchased is between two castles of Mad King Ludwig, which is the mashup game of bet- of between you two cities. You kind of get that castle's feel. Yes. And so yeah. now I'm like, ooh, I love it because I love the I was, idea of the different types of rooms and stuff. Yeah. But I was looking just, at my list right there, which is why I have my phone for a second because I was like, is this, I'm, it's not on my list. Yeah. And, and for me, it's because I don't, I, I'll straight up say I hate the master builder mechanic. Like, like Suburbia is a very similar game in terms of like the market and everything. Mm-hmm. The market just slides down. Like, I just, I think it was Z on the Dice Tower was talking about like, it just makes that part makes his head just clutch up. I can't think yeah, of what, and it, yeah. for me, it just drags the game out and makes so much like thinking that doesn't, I think, add anything to the game. So I actually enjoy playing this game on the app because yeah. then I'm just playing against AI characters. I just don't really care as much, and I kind of just like, price stuff, whatever, and I enjoy it more that way. I agree with that. But like the physical game, I'm kind of like eh on at this mm-hmm. point because I just, I really don't like that master builder. Mechanic, yeah. and I, I really like the game, and it is still on my on my top one hundred. Yeah. I I feel like it might go off with the between two castles, yeah. game because then I get the flavor and stuff that I like and the way the rooms work, yeah. But without some of the fiddliness, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but I mean, it's still it a is, good game. It really it's, is. It's so cool, and yes. I feel like the market. That's what makes the market stand out. Is I'm like. This this everything about this is so awesome, yeah. and this part is so frustrating. Yeah, me. yeah, and it's it just is. like I'm not like I don't have like a good yeah. mind. And for some like, people love that part, but to yeah, me, it's just it's, it's cool. not my jam. Yeah, yeah. so totally it's my fun. 74. So it's still on the list. Totally, I still think it's, it's a great still, game. I still like the game. Ultimately, yeah. it's and a good game. The app uh, is a lot of fun. So it's definitely a good. Yeah. We can get rid of the physical game and just keep the app. Yeah, totally. Um, my number 74 is a game uh, that used to be I would say like my like this is a good gateway. Well, it's still a good gateway worker placement game. But was like my top that has since been replaced, but it's still a great game and I love it to death. And that is Stone Age. Yes, Stone Age yeah. is a wonderful game. Uh, set in the Stone Age, set, what? set in Victorian France for some reason. <laughs> um, no, and so it's set in the Stone Age, and you are you know you're Uga Uga, and you're going around. And you're essentially 
uh, making a little civilization. And so you're going around and you're fishing and you're you're trying to get feeding wood. Your tribe. Yeah, you're feeding your tribe. You're getting wood. You're getting stone. You're getting brick and gold and like and all this kind of stuff. And you're building buildings. And um, you're building huts, and you're also building your tribe and stuff like that by adding more workers and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And you're building an agriculture track. But one thing I love about it, and a lot of people complain about the feeding your people and the fact that, like, everything is done with dice. So if I put two workers, you can put up to seven, I believe, two workers in a spot for wood, I'm going to roll two die. Yeah. And when I roll those dice you then will take the sum of those dice and divide it by a number. In the case for wood, it's three. So mm-hmm. I would take, if I rolled like two sixes, I got a 12. I would divide by three, I would get four wood. Yeah, And that's how it goes. And so the thing is, if you add more workers, the chance of you getting more, especially something like gold where you're going to divide it by six, yeah. the chance of you getting it are higher. So you can kind of mitigate someone with terrible dice rolls. Um. And but some people would, like complain because you can just like roll and not get anything. But at the same time, That's I life. love it because but also because it's thematic of that time. Yes, like sometimes you go out hunting and you didn't find anything. Sometimes you went yes. panic for gold and you didn't get anything. And especially like one thing I love about this game is like the first like two or three rounds, like you are just desperately trying to feed your people. Do like, you can maybe do, like, one you thing. Can, you can feed them wood, and it's like, I'm, they're going to eat wood. You're going to eat bricks. bricks. I don't know yeah. what you want. They're eating it's bricks. like, you can do, like, one thing, and the rest of your workers are just trying to feed your people because your agriculture track is zero. But as you move that up, you'll start getting a certain amount of food every single turn just automatically. Yeah. And I like it because it, 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 like, shows, like, civilization building. In the beginning, yes. it's very hunter-gatherer. You have, you don't all of your time is just trying to eat. Trying to stay alive. But as your civilization grows, you have more time to do other stuff because food isn't as much of an issue anymore, yeah. which is kind of how, like, evolution and, and you know, and, like, civilization has been. Like, yes. it's just, like, it's, like, we started building, you know, they say, like, a big turn was, like, when, like, agriculture and, like, crops happened because now people didn't have to spend so much time making food that they could, like, do stuff with, yeah. like, arts or science or all this kind of stuff. Yeah. They had more I time. Think I think it's, like, uh, Maslow, I think, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's yeah. something like that. And the idea is that, like, you can't even m- think about anything else until you have shelter. Yeah. And food yeah, and water. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, in this game, it's like, now that you have developed yeah. these things, let's move on to harder stuff. Let's start panning for gold and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, exactly. It is one of the let's most... Build some buildings because we have time to. It's yeah. one of the most cleverly best them- thematic themed yeah. games I've ever encountered. I love it. And it's subtle too. It. It's not like it's just, it's yeah. just, but it just, it makes sense. It's, it doesn't, you don't think about it like as a theme until you start like playing it a bunch. I'm just like, oh man, like, yeah, the food, it's great that the food doesn't be, be yeah. it's not even an issue anymore. Yeah, so cool. exactly. Because eventually so you get to the point cool. where like you literally don't have to think about food at all. Yeah. And it's like, I, I don't know, I love Stone Age. It's great. It's a great kind of intro worker placement game because yeah. it's like, there's not very many spots to go to. They're all simple. Like here, you're getting wood, you're going to roll dice. What do you do that divided by this? That's what you get, you know, yeah. and you're using that to like build building. It's very simple. So cool. It's just wonderful. I love it. Stone Age is a great, great game. That's my number 74. Good call, dude. Ugh. Yeah. Mm. Well done. Love Let's it. do 73. 73. Let's do it right now. God, I love Stone Age so much. <laughs> 73. All right, number 73. Dude, why don't you do me a favor, shine a light on your 73 with Lamps Plus. Lamps Plus, get your lamps today. And I will talk about my 73. My 73 is a great other two-player game. We have a lot of two-player games because it's mostly me and this Bing Bong playing. Just these two. So... Um, this is a trick, a two-player trick-taking game called Fox in the Forest by Renegade Games. Dude, wonderful little game. Clap it up for Renegade Games real quick. Clap it up. God, they do good. They do good work. They do good work. Um, uh, Renegade Games and a Fox in the Forest is a two-player trick-taking game. And again, we talked about trick-taking game, I think, last list with indulgence. It's like, for me, I need something in trick-taking that adds more. It's not just like, get the most hearts. Like, I just get really bored. Sure. Uh, indulgence, the tricks are always changing. This one, it's like there's different cards have different powers and stuff, and like you want the most tricks or but not all of them, because then if you have too many, you Greedy. get like zero <laughs> points. And it's just it's a really interesting balancing act. I'm terrible at it. I'm not good at trick taking games, but I really, really like it. And you can throughout the game change the trump card to whatever you want, and it and you can do certain things, you get to draw cards. It's just 
It's kind of hard to explain, but it's a wonderful little trick-taking game that's only for two players. So if you only have one one other person and you want to either learn trick-taking games or play them more, get Fox in the Force. It's a great game. Great little art, too. Mm -hmm. Pretty. But again, it's just little deck cards. I mean, there's yeah. nothing else. It's not it's even three like... three suits. Each has 11 cards. Yeah, it's not cards. like 52. Nothing. It's just... it's And it's great. And it's, it's a wonderful little tactical trick-taking game that's tough and fun. And I'm terrible at it, and I love it. <laughs> It's a good one. It's a good one. My number uh, 73 is a really fun, uh, I guess, simultaneous selection game, uh, all based around different roles and stuff. And you're pirates, and you're all working a ship, and you're pr trying to play different uh, roles on this ship all at the same time, hoping to only be the only one playing this type of role. It's Libertalia. Libertalia. So Libertalia is really cool. Um because there's like 30 cars, I think. Yeah, I think so. There's 30 and 25. Maybe. 25 yeah, or so, 30 a roles uh, that are on the ship, all the way from Parrot all the way up to the Captain. <laughs> parrot. Oh. You know what I mean? And and everything in between. And so you'll have like the the, the bosun and the, the granny of water. And, yeah, and, the, all this stuff, and, yeah. and the brawler and the monkey, you know, and, and all these different characters that all do different things. Um, and a lot of times it's really advantageous to play your card in this very specific situation. So you're trying to make sure you play your card at the right time, but it's tricky because we are all at the beginning of the game, given the same nine cards Yeah. of those 30 odd rolls, we get the same nine. It's up to you when you play them, we're going to play six rounds yeah. and you're hoping to, so we all know at the beginning of the game what we have. So yeah. I'm like, I know this card's only good if I'm the only one that plays it, so I'm going to hold on to it. Or maybe I'm yeah. going to try to play it first because I'm going to think that no one else is going to play it first because everyone's going to wait to play it second. So you're playing the players and you're trying to play these cards. And the cool thing is, is you get nine cards, but you play six rounds of that first kind of yeah. hand. Then what you'll do is you'll get uh, six more cards that we all get, but those three that you didn't use in the first round, you keep. Yeah. So as the game goes, there starts to be more and more differences. Yeah. yeah, because you maybe didn't keep the same three that I kept. Yeah. And all around, and so it starts to maybe that one card you've been hanging on to all game finally is you know you know no one has it. played yeah. it. Yeah. You're like bam, throwing it down. Uh, and it's just a really cool game where you're trying to collect booty. You're trying to avoid like curses and stuff. Yeah. That it, it's just it's it's so cool because you're trying to ultimately play kind of like the highest rank. In that Generally, turn, yeah. and it's just it's so fun because you're just playing the players. Yeah, it's all the players. You can play it all the way up to like six, I think, where it's just it's pretty much let's chaos. Make, let's make this one shorter and call it Citadels, but good. I mean, that's the very roundabout call thing that I was going to say is yeah. like absolutely <laughs> replace Citadel. Citadels yeah, can go far, far away now. You know, you go over there. Italia. Go I like right the theme better. Yeah, I love the roles the and art stuff. is gorgeous too. Yeah. Beautiful oh art. Libertalia is fun, fun, fun stuff. And uh, that's why it's on my list. Yeah. yeah. It's absolutely Citadel's killer for us. Yeah. Absolute. Yeah. Absolute. Bam. Is that 73? Should yeah. Hit that 72? Yeah. I mean, you know. Right. You want it? I guess. All right. Yeah. 72. All right, folks. So getting down to it. 72 yeah. for me is a cooperative game. It is very difficult. Uh, and it's very poignant to the time of, of filming this. Uh, because California in the oh. last many years has dealt with many wildfires. Yeah. Um, and in it's fact, tough. at the time of this recording, there's a lot of fire where we live. And it's like half scary. of LA is on fire yeah, right it's, now. It's scary stuff. And there are amazing wildfire firefighters out there uh, doing work every day. Seriously. And clap it up for all them. Seriously, the true heroes. Uh, and the game that I want to talk about is Hot Shots. Real quick, I saw a meme just talking about that. Real quick, that uh, that was beautiful. Really, it just it moved me a lot. But it was like a picture. It was like it was like Superman, Batman, Spider Man, all these people, just all in a row, and stuff like that. And then uh, there's like a firefighter in front, and then Superman just said, "Welcome to the team." Because uh, superheroes and just it, oh man, uh, it made me so emotional. I'm sorry, it just I, oh, I saw okay. it literally it's this amazing. morning, and so just go on, go on. That's awesome. Anyway, so Hot Shots is a game that tries to. Um, Put you in the shoes of these wildfire. I never want to be in those shoes. Firefighters, yeah, it's intense work. I thought for a while that I wanted to do that, and it's it's. Yeah, I mean, harsh. that's hardcore work right there. Um, very important work. Uh, and and in this game, it's it's interesting. You build out this kind of this your board every game, and it's it's just various different areas of land and and little buildings and stuff like that. And you're just trying to basically stop. Some it's of the so hard. of the fire from taking over, and the the thing that's really interesting about it is like 
winds are going to shift on you yeah. and move fire in different directions. <laughs> it's real point and, right and now. Yeah. Yes, no, it is. And it's the whole thing about it is like the, the reality is like you're not going to come out of it unscathed. No. Like parts of the land are going to burn. Yeah. And like and with wildfire – firefighting it's it's not about putting it out it's about containing it yeah it's about pushing it in the direction you want to go it's yeah. really wild the, the the kind of technology they use and ways to to move fire in the way that they want to and this game's all about that you build fire breaks and different things yeah. to try to like let's make sure it just stays over here let's work it stays over away here. from these buildings and all this kind yes, of yeah you and know? you're trying to save like you're trying to protect certain buildings in like kind of your base and everything and it's just a very interesting game yeah. that you're if you're playing uh each of player has just like a little bit of a power yeah um and it's just just very interesting because it's not about like get the hose out and like no yeah, you know it's just like no i mean that if you can do it great of course yeah it's kind of a press your luck game with dice ultimately yeah. uh and so it's like you could roll if you roll the right symbols and stuff you might get a really good roll that puts out some of the fire but it, maybe it's smarter just to build fire breaks and you have a couple of cards that give you or tiles that give you like one-time uses of like a helicopter and a plane and just figuring out when to use those, uh, it's just, it's a really fascinating, yeah, fun game. It's a good, and uh, a game I feel like got super overlooked. Like, Yeah, and I think it's a really engaging, yeah, a great cooperative game. game. And, and it's but a theme that, that no games are about. There's like two yeah. firefighter games. Yeah, it's and like, both are really great. Yeah. But I love that you have Flashpoint Fire Rescue for kind of like urban, like urban firefighting. Yeah, and yeah. then you have the flip side. I think totally, both games are... Because they are totally they different. Very, yeah, 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 like, 100%. I mean, they Flashpoint really are. Flashpoint feels more kind of pandemic-y. Um, and, and this one just, it, just with the dice and everything, yeah, it's just it's, an interesting game that like, I think about, you know, uh, after I play and everything. So anyway, that's my 72 is hot shots. My 72 is a game that's been on Mike's list before. We're starting to get a, a lot more cross over here. And uh, hey, that happens. is a game about a party, a party with some raw fish. <sighs> sushi go party is my 72. I love it's sushi go and I love sushi Such go party. Game. It's a great drafting game also like four dollars it's so cheap especially sushi go very affordable but like so great but it's a game as mike said uh you know keep it short but it's like you have a whole bunch of different kind of sushi in your hand i think eight cards and it's a drafting game just straight up drafting so you're going to keep one card pass, pass the cards to the left keep a card pass you keep passing around until everyone has all the cards down yep. but you're trying to collect sets you know and so you want a, a bunch of different kinds of nigiri you want a bunch of different kinds of sashimi or something like that and you're trying to collect like sashimi you need three of them you get 10 points or something like that and you're just trying to, it's just a set collection game very simple with really really cutesy art mm -hmm. just the cutest art in the game and then on top of that with sushi go it's just very this is the cards you have boom but sushi go party they add a whole bunch of different kinds of sushi and a whole bunch of other stuff like Tons wasabi and all this kind of stuff and there's a whole bunch of variations in the game. Like, if you want a really mean game, play with these. If you yeah. want a really easy or, or very, like, family-friendly game, play with these. If you want a game that's great where two players, play with these. If you want, like, just the base game, play. It, it's, like, all these different stuff. And ultimately, you can always just randomize it. Yeah. And it's different every time. It plays a big group of people and, like, a lot of driving games. It doesn't slow the game down because you're always just passing and passing yeah. and passing. It's the same amount of cards. It's great. I love it. Sushi Go Party is a great, cheap game, drafting game. Go for it. It's wonderful. Sushi Go Party. Bam. Do it, do it while eating sushi, which we've done, and it was lovely. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So good. Sushi Go Party is my number 72. Love it. Let's move on to 71. This now that's the last of this list. It, we're, we're plowing Whoa. right through it. Dang. 71. Sushi Go Party. Sushi Go Party. So many more to go. So our number 71 is brought to you by a little bit of holiday cheer, Poinsettias. Poinsettias are our number 71 oh, sponsor. Oh, and stop. so, stop. so uh, it's quick, got, Nick, I just don't got want a good, to, don't eat, they're poisonous. I don't want you to look foolish. What's up? Sorry. It's poinsettia. Uh, no, no, there's no I, it's poinsettias. Poinsettias, yeah, no, it's, it's great the vernacular for Christmas. Is and, you know, it's actually poinsettia. Can you just, can we... No, we need to be a united front. Just the brand with them. the Brothers Murphy is kind of as two things, so we need to be the same. So no, no, yeah, but, but we should be the same and correct at the same time. So let's be poinsettia. But you know, I think most people are more comfortable here. Nah, I, I think you're. I think you're trying to be a little elitist by saying like, oh, "I'm gonna throw another vowel in there." You don't really need that. It's poinsettia. It's Listen simple, here. Simple is great. Folks in the chat, put in the comments below. Is it poinsettia or poinsettia? It's poinsettia. 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 And you're part of. Let's just also bring a little team Mike here. Let's just bring it right here. All right. You know what? I know. Let's forget. You know what? Christmas is kids. You know, Christmas is kids. I'm tired of number seventy-one. Not in number seventy-one is a game about fighting and it's a game um, about stacking cards and that is Rhino Hero Super Battle oh, is number 71 nice. which is a wonderful game it's a great dexterity game where you're stacking cards and you're stacking these like wall cards and there's like tall walls and short walls 
and you're putting out walls and then putting a floor on top of it and then someone will put floors walls on top of that and then floor of the walls and you're building up yeah, and you have your little cards type yeah thing. you have your little your little uh animal superhero animals so like a giraffe and like a penguin and all this kind of stuff and you're moving up and and it just gets it just gets crazy the stacking <laughs> in this game because it's like so fun there's three different like depots that you can start in so you'll start one here and start one here and then start one here or you can build one up and stuff but now that they start connecting in these weird ways and like for us we're such agents of chaos that like <laughs> Because there's some cards that, like, there's some uh, situations where you can only use, like, one wall card. Because the yeah. general thing is you, you want two walls and this thing on top. It's pretty sturdy. But sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can only do one wall, and you just got to balance it in the middle there. And then someone else will be like, I'm going to put two on the other ends of this. It's so fun. There's some where you have to use a short wall and then a tall wall. So you have to, like, have it where, like, this floor over here is one taller than this one. So you use the short wall here and the tall wall here or something like that. And it just, it ends up with these giant structures that start getting more and more precarious. And then on top of that, you're rolling a dice, a die, and a how, whatever you roll, that's how many floors your character gets to move up. And essentially how you win the game is whenever the, the tower inevitably falls, if you were the highest superhero, you win the game. Yeah. So you're constantly going up, and if you end up on the same floor as another superhero, you guys fight, so you just roll a die, and then whoever uh, loses that fight has to move down a level, and then if there's someone else on that level, they have to Keep fight fighting. again. So, <laughs> and it just ends up, and there are these like, monkeys that you have to hang off it, which just add like weird balance things. Little dexterity stuff. And my hands are shaking, I'm like... No. I'm just trying to like, and it's just, it's so much fun. It's just, I mean, it's a stacking little game, super light. Uh, it's, it's just wonderful. It's so much fun. If you like Dexterity and you have kids or something like that, like, get it. It's amazing. Yeah. You'll get a box that's so unnecessarily large. And it's so humongous for a reason. <laughs> I love it. But uh, the Round of Heroes Super Battle is so, I mean, it's it's such a fun game. Absolutely yeah. fun. Love Great it. party game. Round of Heroes Super Battle. Love, love it. 71. My number uh, 71 is about party as well. It's about um, trying to put a party together or at least one member of the party uh, this would be like a D and D party. So if you're playing D and D, it's oh. very important that you roll out stats and everything for your character, Indeed. whatever your character is going to be. And board gaming is so nerdy that they took a nerdy element of a very nerdy thing and made a board game all about that one part that just is before you do the actual yeah. thing. Uh, and I love it. It is role play. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole point of the game is you're rolling out a D and D character, and it's awesome. It's just fantastic. It right? really is. So you get it's it's kind of Sagrada uh, Sagrada for gamers or a heavier version of Sagrada. And the reason they do that is because you're rolling different colored dice and you're putting them into different spaces. Uh, similar to how you would in Sagrada by building the stained glass window. Uh, and you're basically putting them into different rows that have different stat attributes, like strength and constitution and your intelligence and wisdom. And each of the areas are going to uh, allow you to do different things with your dice. And you're trying to get like stats in certain numbers. Yeah. Like you want to be, you're a, a human that needs to be really strong. So you want to have like all sixes across the board. So you have 18, you have a kind of perfect stats for your uh, strength. Yeah. And all these different areas and you're trying to match up like colors in the right columns that'll give you like points based on this one area and you want to get like the right values of the stats to satisfy this area and then you can figure out what your alignment's going to be and all these things are kind of randomized to give you different little challenges yeah and it's just like a really fun cool game and there's things in the market you can buy and it's just all kind of the way it ties into DD &D yeah is fun. it's great you know you get like weapons and you get attributes and skills and stuff but they all ultimately just help you with the game yeah and then there's a great expansion with monsters and minions where it kind of takes a step into the D, &D where you get to a roll by monsters yeah, a little bit. you get to fight which is stuff. cool because yeah. it kind of like gives you like yeah and then yeah, it, adds adds a character. Great, it adds kind of like the a, so that's a i don't think it's necessarily missing from the base but it adds it kind of it's like it was here and it just kind of fills fills yeah. me out a little it, more you for know? me it's i i wouldn't really want to play role player without yeah and expansion. it's easy enough to teach where you can just get it yeah. but it's not because the whole thing about the monsters like you can fight them or not yeah so like, you, you're going to do better if you do, but it's like, ultimately, if you want to buy something in the market, buy instead of fight. Or yeah. If you don't care about the market, fight instead of buy. So now it's nice because you're like, I don't care about anything that's out here in the market this round. Yeah. Well, it's like, well, now you have something to do. Yeah, totally. So it just kind of yeah, fills out that game a little more. Uh, but it's just, it's cool because there's all these different um, factions. There's human, there's dragonborn, you know, all these different... Uh, there's toad people, constructs, uh, yeah, it's dark elves. Everything they'll have could want. advantages and disadvantages. And yeah, stuff. slight, yeah. slight little stat boosts and, and dumps and it's things. It's great though. And it really the cool is. thing is, is like a, a small thing that's really great is every single faction, double sided, male and female. 
Boom. So whatever you want to make it. Love and guys, it. board game publisher stuff, it's that simple. Yeah. It is that easy. <laughs> Just make it double sided, one for each gender, then more people are represented. Yeah. Uh, and I love that about the game. Yeah. Um, and it's just it's just a fun, interesting, super great. Yeah, that puzzly, puzzly it. trying it's to such a good game. Figure out what to go where, and it's it's surprisingly kind of like heavy. You know, like if you're trying you're trying to keep air, focus on so many different areas at once. Uh, I I super dig it. And there's a cool thing of you can get uh, score pads that you like physically fill <laughs> out. So if you like right. roll out a really interesting character, you can like write all that stuff down, and it's kind of like a jump starter for. Like playing yeah, actual D and D, you're like, I kind of, I'm gonna save this, and next time I do a character, I'm like, totally. here's my stats, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like, totally. So I think that's just a cool, I agree. cool like added bonus. Anyway, my number seventy one is role player, and that is gonna be it for this ten right here. Pa, 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 pa. Man, we are starting to get into the good and good goods. Mm -hmm. So next list is gonna be a seventy three sixty one, and then we're almost done with the half. Oh, so thank you so much for joining us again. Please make sure to check out our YouTube channel where we do top tens and all sorts of fun, silly stuff. Check out our Twitch where we live stream a couple times a week over there. It's just a blast. It's all a good time. Love you all so so much. Thank you for being here with this journey. Thank you so much. We'll see y'all in the next section of the top one hundred. Cheers and have a great day. Woo. This whole is the ravings of two idiots I add up the song cause I'm an idiot Those John Deere tractors are just hideous Oh, who would want to be seen riding one of those When you could be spraying some mad sexy hair Idiots I add up the song